hi folks, this is part two of a look at the 2023 National 5 Physics Multiple Choice paper. The whole paper is two and a half hours, but the multiple choice section should take you about 45 minutes, and hopefully we will get through these questions in about 10 minutes. So, there's the data sheet. That's where you'll find any of the numbers that you might require in some of the questions. And don't forget, you will also need your relationship sheet. And if you're looking for one of them, you'll find one on the Calder Glen High School Physics website on the National 5 page under Useful Documents. There it's there, and make sure you keep that beside you while you're working through Paper 1 and Paper 2. And it contains all the relationships you might need for the whole National 5 Physics course. So without more ado, let's jump straight in where we left off. That was question 16 on Properties of Matter. And this is a question on heat energy. So a student carries out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of copper using the apparatus shown below. And then the student switches on the power supply and the electrical heater heats the block of copper. And the joule meter measures the energy supplied to the electrical heater. And the student suggests the following measurements should be made. And then we have to decide which of these measurements must be made to determine the specific heat capacity of copper. Well, let's start with our relationship here. So if we go to the relationship sheet, there's our old pal EH equals CM delta T. Let's write that down and rearrange it for C. So C equals EH over M delta T. And there's the three quantities we need to measure in order to calculate the specific heat capacity. So delta T is the change in temperature of the block, M is the mass of the block, and EH, we're already told that the joule meter is measuring the energy supplied to the electrical heater. So the student suggests the following measurement should also be made, that will be the mass and the initial and final readings on the thermometer, because that will give us the change in temperature. So it's one. And two, we don't need to work out the power of the heater because we're not timing it and we know how much energy that's going to be on the joule meter. So one and two only, that corresponds to answer C. Moving on then, question 17. The minimum energy required to melt 3.5 kilograms of ice at its melting point into water at the same temperature is, well, this is a change in state question. And it's the solid to liquid or fusion state change. So let's write the relationship down. EH equals ML. M is the mass, 3.5. And L is the specific latent heat of fusion of water. So we're looking for that number. 3.34 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. Let's sub that in. And if you do that on your calculator... You'll get an answer of 1169000 joules, which, if you put in the standard form and round correctly, is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. And that corresponds to answer B. That's 17B. Question 18. A hammer hits a nail with a force of 5 kilo newtons, or 5,000 newtons, and the pressure exerted by the hammer on the nail is 2.0 times 10 to the 8 pascals. And we have to work out the area of the nail hit by the hammer. So straight to your relationship sheet. And pressure equals force over area. Let's sub the numbers in. So the pressure was 2 times 10 to the 8. That's equal to the force, which is 5,000 newtons over the area. And now let's rearrange it to find the area. So A equals 5,000 divided by 2.0 times 10 to the 8. And if you do that correctly on your calculator, that will give you an answer of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 square metres. Now, watch out if you're using the new version of the Casio FX83CW. Make sure you're using the fraction button on your calculator to do that calculation. And if you want to see my rant about the new Casio FX83CW calculator, then that video is also on this channel. Anyway, it's 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 square metres. That corresponds to answer B. Question 19. 
A sealed hollow buoy drifts from the warm Atlantic waters into cold Arctic waters, and the volume of the buoy remains constant. The pressure of the trapped air inside the buoy changes, because the pressure is, well, let's think about the kinetic model here, as temperature decreases, the pressure also decreases if the volume remains constant. You've got this relationship on your relationship sheet. So P divided by T is equal to a constant. So P is directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. And that is answer A. Question 20. Pressure of a fixed mass of gas is 5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Its temperature is 320 Kelvin. And the volume is 2.2 cubic metres. The gas is then heated to a new temperature of 370 Kelvin and the pressure of the gas increases to 5.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And we have to work out the new volume of the gas. Well, all three things are changing here. Pressure, temperature and volume. So we're going to need the combined gas law equation here. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And sub in everything you know, first pressure was 5 times 10 to the 5, the first volume was 2.2, and the first temperature was 320. The new pressure is 5.5 times 10 to the 5, and it's the new volume that we're looking for, divided by the new temperature, which is 370. And then we want to rearrange all of this to get V2 as the subject of the equation. Now you could do some partial calculations first, but let's just show you the full rearrangement. So V2 will be equal to 5 times 10 to the 5 times the 2.2 times 370, all over 5.5 times 10 to the 5 times the 320. You can cancel 10 to the 5 top and bottom, and if you do the calculation, you get V2 equals 2.3 cubic metres. Pretty tricky for one mark but 2.3 cubic meters is answer C. Okay, question 21. The diagram represents a wave, and the speed of the wave is 3 meters per second, and which row in the table shows the amplitude and the frequency of this wave? Well, the amplitude will be half of the 0.4 meters that's shown from the very top to the very bottom, because the amplitude is the height measured from the middle to the crest, so the amplitude is 0.2 meters, so it could be A or B or C here. Now what about the frequency? Well, we could use the wave equation V equals F lambda, so F equals V over lambda. And we're told the speed of the wave is 3 meters per second. And the wavelength, well, if we look at the diagram, there are two complete wavelengths in the 12 meters. So one wavelength will be 6 meters. So let's sub in 6 for the wavelength, and that gives us a frequency of 0 0.5 Hz, and that means our answer is B. Moving on then, question 22. Which diagram shows the diffraction of water waves as they pass through a gap in a barrier? Well, diffraction is the bending of waves around an obstacle, or in this case, it's the bending of waves around the edges of a gap. And this is a large gap, so there shouldn't be any bending in the centre region. So A is incorrect. And there's no bending at all in answer B. And it's only bending on one side in C. And answer D is incorrect because the gap has to be smaller than the wavelength of the waves for circular waves to be produced. And that's a large gap. And answer E is correct, bending at both edges straight in the middle. Okay, question 23. A ray of light passes through a glass block as shown, and it's going from glass into air. Which ray shows the path of red light in air? Well, when it goes from glass back into air again, it's going to cross over the normal and bend away from the normal. So, it's not Q, because that's going straight through. And it's not R, S or T, because they aren't crossing over the normal. So it can only be ray P, and that corresponds to answer A. Question 24. A sample of uranium has an activity of 2.4 times 10 to the 4 becquerels, and we have to determine the number of nuclei decaying in 15 minutes. Back to the relationship sheet then, and there's our nuclear radiation relationships, and we're looking 
for the first one there. Activity is the number of decays divided by the time in seconds. So let's write that down and then rearrange it because we're looking for the number of nuclei decaying in 15 minutes. So the activity was 2.4 times 10 to the 4. And we're multiplying that by the time, which was 15 minutes times 60 seconds. Don't forget to multiply by 60 because if you don't, you'll get answer D, which is wrong. So the answer you should be getting is 21,600,000. And if you write that in standard form to two significant figures, that's 2.2 times 10 to the 7 nuclei. And that corresponds to answer E. Okay, last one, question 25. A student makes the following statements about nuclear fusion. And we have to state which of these statements is or are correct. Now, it's fusion. That's when two small nuclei, like hydrogen nuclei are fused or joined together. So, statement one, nuclear fusion is when a large nucleus splits into smaller nuclei. Nope, that would be nuclear fission. Statement two, plasma containment is required to sustain nuclear fusion reactions in a reactor. Yes, that's true. And statement three, nuclear fusion takes place at low temperatures. No, it doesn't takes place at millions of degrees. So it's only statement two that's correct, and that corresponds to 25B. That's it then, that's the 2023 National 5 Physics Multiple Choice Paper. And don't forget, if you're revising for your prelims or your final exam, do as many past papers as you can. We'll see you in the next one.